I'm not. <laughs> So I think every therapist dreams of having a full self-pay private practice where prospective clients just line up at the door. But being self-pay or private pay is not always all that it's chalked up to be. So as a follow-up to my last video about insurance pros and cons, I wanna to talk today about the pros and cons of having a self-pay practice. So first, let's cover some of the benefits. They're pretty awesome. So the most significant pro to running a self-pay practice is that you get to determine your fee and actually get paid the rate that you set. You see, when you are working with insurance companies, your contract determines how much you get paid. So your self-pay rate can be $150, but if you're a network with an insurance company and they only reimburse 80, you can just kiss that other $70 goodbye. Mwah. That's $70 per session that just goes right out the window, just like a beautiful cash-filled bird that just ransacked your wallet. Okay, so back to pros. When you're self-pay and you can set your own rates, that also means that you can maintain a smaller caseload and still make a great living. Less clients equals less mental energy and emotional energy and less time in the office, which also means more time to do things like grab coffee with a friend on a random Tuesday morning, start a side hustle, or <gasps> what if you could take a whole day off guilt-free? Being self-pay sounds pretty delicious, doesn't it? So now let's talk about some of the things that you don't have to deal with when you're self-pay. You don't have to diagnose, you don't have to worry about denied claims, and you don't even have to deal with only seeing clients in your office. If you wanna do online therapy or have phone sessions, you can do that without having to make sure that it's covered under your client's insurance plan. You just call all the shots. And one of my favorite things about having a self-pay practice is that the clients who come to see me are extremely dedicated and committed. After all, they're paying a lot of money out of their own pocket pockets. So they're invested in the process and I'm invested in getting them results. It's a win-win. Okay. So before you go terminating all of your insurance contracts, let's cover some of the really important cons to being self-pay. Number one, it generally takes longer to build a caseload. So if you take insurance, you can expect to fill your schedule within a matter of months. But if you're self-pay, it can take a year or even longer to build a full-time caseload. A second con to being self-pay is that there's going to have to be a lot more marketing efforts that you do. It's not enough to just hang a shingle. You'll have to really form close relationships with referral sources, and you'll need a marketing strategy that's top-notch. Self-pay practices are also really susceptible to the highs and lows of the economy. So when the stock market plummets, be prepared to lose a good percentage of your caseload as people cling to their wallets. You're also more likely to get requests for bi-weekly or monthly sessions, which can make scheduling a bit of a clusterfuck and have a huge impact on your bottom line. And last but not least, having a self-pay practice means that you're limiting your practice to those who have the financial resources to pay you. I see a lot of self-pay therapists get caught up in the reduced fee sliding scale trap and suddenly they're running a charity. They're seeing 30 clients a week just to make ends meet, seeing pro bono clients when they can't even afford to pay themselves, and getting into some pretty sticky situations out of scarcity and fear that they just can't make it. So if you're considering starting your practice self-pay or transitioning to a self-pay practice, it's important to know exactly how many clients you need to see at what fee in order to make it work for you. After all, if you're operating a self-pay practice but charging everyone a reduced rate, you would've been better off just taking insurance. You'd probably get paid more than just hacking your fees with a machete. So yes, having a self-pay practice has many advantages, but there are also some downfalls that you need to consider before you decide. What I did when I first started out is that I got on two panels that were the most popular in my area. And then over time, as I became more niched down and more confident, I was able to terminate each contract and now my practice is 100% self-pay. Comment below and tell me if you run a private pay practice. What pros and cons have you noticed that maybe I didn't cover today? See you next week. Hey, thanks for tuning in. Don't forget to click subscribe and visit us at yourbadasstherapypractice.com. I have a free four-part video e-course on taking your Psychology Today profile from bad to badass. Can't wait to have you join us.